Children lie and cheat in new and innovative ways. An elementary school in a college? My college didn't even have vending machines. Ooh, cartoon sequences like Mary Poppins or Cool World. Directed by Johan's loser brother. Here is a classroom. The end. It might be called an average classroom, but the children in it are not average. Mediocre is a better word for it. For instance, meet Annabelle, who is in the buttons and bows stage of girlhood. For Annabelle, everything has a frilly decoration. Oh, like she came up with that on her own. William is a fine boy, but things are so confusing right now. Like, where is his nose? Some people would call Clarence incorrigible, but he's simply a rebel. Sometimes school is so ridiculous to him. I hear you, brother. And here is Miss Morton, in most respects an excellent teacher. But when it comes to art, she feels completely lost. Well, sure, look at her. She wonders, what shall I have them do? And how can I keep them busy? With Casper's ultrasound. Last Valentine's Day, she decided that her class would make Valentine's. And so she stayed up half the night, duplicating a heart, a cupid, and a lace doily for each student. What the? She didn't mean to stifle creativity, but that was exactly what she was doing. She certainly didn't stifle her architect's creativity. Wow! Her instructions were very confusing and dictatorial, particularly to William. Stay within the lines. Put underwear on your head. Wear penguin pants. Color the heart red. Color the cupid pink. Express your identity through consumerism and vote against your own interests. And put the whole thing in the center of the doily. Then spray it with fixative and eat it. You know the drill. All of these rules and regulations made some people happy and some indifferent. Indifference? Yeah, I'm feeling that. And some just plain disgusted. Hell yeah, now we're talking. Fortunately, you can't kill all creative spirit. But you can always try. Oh well. True artists must suffer, they say. Uh, does that apply to animators as well? Asking for an audience. Here are the finished products. Results of the teacher's directing methods. But did anyone actually express his own ideas or creativeness? Unfortunately, only one person. And he has been dealt with. So remember, teacher, with any art project, you see with the eyes of an adult, not those of a child. You don't know what it's like to be lit or turnt. Your concept of a cow is very different from the concepts of your pupils. Who are you, Jacques Derrida? For instance, Annabelle's cow reflects the nature of her personality. Lacy, frilly, and decorative. Society conditioned me this way. I really like video games and trucks. William's Texas Longhorn reflects a combination of his playground environment and his vivid imagination. And his big oil trust fund. Oh. But Clarence's bold ingenuity Thanks. is uniquely expressed by his functional cow. My eyes are up here, moo. Here are four suggested steps to guide you in teaching art. Motivation, orientation, procrastination, creation, drinking, and the finished product. Dario Argento has hijacked the production. Now let's go into this classroom with these children and see these four points demonstrated through actual application. Sounds messy, but okay. First is motivation. In this classroom, a portable cage is provided so that all students can get a good look. Cockfights really spark a child's imagination. The children study the color, form, texture, and reactions of the subject. They also get to handpick their nuggets for lunchtime. Their interest is aroused. They become motivated by discussing the chickens and actually handling them. Gosh, and to think we came this close to drawing rattlesnakes today. Then you rub the spices. Hello? The next step is orientation, the planning stage. The children and the teacher decide on the media to use, where, and how to use them. Uh, can I just trace my hand and call it a turkey? I got a thing at two. Orientation includes knowing how to get out their own materials and where to return them when they are through. 
Be sure to bring your receipt. The children have picked their subjects and chosen their media. This is the process of orientation. But this orientation is so much more fun. Select your rutabaga and await instruction. After motivation and orientation, they are now ready to express their ideas. The third step is creation. Annabelle creation. Hey, where did you kids get that brown clay? Oh my God! Students express their own concepts and use largely their own techniques. Timmy here works exclusively in the medium of Tootsie Rolls. First person to say happy little tree gets a knuckle sandwich. Full free movements and the use of bold colors are desirable. But don't hold your breath. I think I made a pokeball, but I don't know what that is. Some children, of course, don't immediately develop a plan of what they would like to create in their material. Can I call this outsider art and pack it in early? Often it helps to talk the problem over with the teacher. She suggests, stimulates, and encourages the child to work out his own problems. You're on your own, Skippy. Welcome to art. Just, you know, do it. Do it good. I don't know what to tell you. Don't do dumb stuff. An idea is born, and the creative process begins. Time to pour a drink and check Twitter. Susie's chicken propaganda is coming along nicely. Creation is the child's expression of his own ideas. He chooses a medium which appeals to his own individual needs. If that's true, what does this say about me? I'm a weirdo. Characteristics of materials are discovered by exploration. Shaping, feeling, and manipulating all help to acquaint the child with his medium. The Long Island medium. A variety of media stimulates imagination. Okay. Clay, tempera, and finger paint are only a few of the many art media available to the child. Let him choose the material. What if he just says boogers and starts laughing? The style of expression varies with each individual. Most children have a natural sense of design. Also, their use of color usually reflects the mood of their paintings. And vice versa. Interpretation, rather than realistic imitation, is the object of true creativity. I thought it was revenge on past lovers. The process, as well as the product, play equally important roles in creative expression. Or you can just tell us what to draw and we'll do it. Here is the last the actual finished product. Chicken freaking palooza. After progressing through motivation, orientation, and creation, and excitation, the class has reached the final stage, a display of as many different interpretations as there are children. Wow, so like five? It's diorama-rama. Okay, these are all very interesting. Uh, may not be my place to say this, but I think the animators skipped the orientation stage. In summing up the steps we have just seen demonstrated, we found that to stimulate a child's creative outlets, the child must be motivated. He should be encouraged to express himself in his own way. He should be identified exclusively with male pronouns. That Goofus and Gallant or Terence and Philip. The orientation or planning stage involves the selection of materials and demonstrations of techniques by the teacher when needed. Let's acknowledge the elephant in the room. Creation, an outgrowth of motivation, now becomes an expression for the student's own ideas. My idea is Babar, I guess. And this is their finished display. Even the girl did one. Uh. Of course, some students not affecting they mice rather than elephants. <laughs> Wait, what? I'll take that again. <laughs> Sad trombone. This movie's saying what we're all thinking. Okay, bye. <laughs> Goodbye.
Thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoy fun with shorts, please like and share. And if you want to see all the fun with shorts, check me out at patreon.com slash joshway. For as little as a dollar per video, you can see the monthly exclusive episode as well as other goodies and freebies. Thanks a lot. See you next time.